Hi, everybody. A lot of people are concerned about coronavirus, and I thought it would be really powerful to look into how A Course in Miracles would look at this experience. Lots of people say the Course is really theoretical and out there and very spiritual and it's not practical. Well, guess what? <laughs> the, course, the Course in Miracles has some of the most practical advice and inspiring advice to help us deal with something that where a lot of people are facing today. So let us go back to the basics of the Course. The Course says that there are only two emotions, only two experiences, love and fear. If it's not fear, it's love, and if it's not love, it's fear. So what we're experiencing on a pretty much a global basis now is that there are a lot, a lot, a lot of people who are really afraid about this coronavirus outbreak. And the Course also tells us that the holiest spot on earth is where an ancient hatred has become a present love. Now, fear is actually a form of hatred. It's a form of resistance and attack on God and self. And so we can say that the bigger the fear, the bigger the opportunity for healing, because when you choose love where there was fear, the transformation is far more powerful than if there had not been fear in the first place. So let us begin by reframing the coronavirus as a huge, huge global opportunity to choose love, to choose trust, to choose peace instead of fear. Now, even if lots of people on the planet are not choosing love, you and I have the power to do so. And when we do that, our effects are strong. The Course also tells us that when you perform a miracle, i.e. when you choose love, the, the uh, effects go out like ripples, and you may touch and heal thousands of people you never hear about. And so simply by you and I choosing to remain at peace while a part of our mind would prefer fear or other people prefer fear, simply being at peace, no matter what's going on in the illusion around you is healing to the planet. Now, of course, health agencies have prescribed many, many practical responses. Wash your hands, wear a mask, don't go out in public, uh, cancel events, and all these are quite practical and certainly serve their purpose. However, you and I know that healing happens at the root more than at the symptom. I think Thoreau said, for every thousand people hacking at the branches of evil, there's one hacking at the root. So while we may be tempted to manipulate symptoms, when we go to the root of fear and heal it with love, that's a real healing. That's a healing that goes on forever, not just quarantining a particular symptom. So let's look at some of the course lessons that address this quite directly. I just, I just love how the Course deals with this. So the Course tells us there is nothing to fear. Now, from the ego standpoint, <laughs> there is everything to fear because at every turn there's some threat waiting you, waiting for you. And, you know, in the ego's world, if it's not one thing, it's another. You can always find something to be afraid about. You, know, you can be afraid about the government, you can be afraid about the economy, you can be afraid about, about pain in your body, you can be afraid about your job. You know, the moment the ego puts one fire out, another one pops up because that's the entire ego's world. The entire ego's world is about danger, threat, protection, and putting fires out. But as you well know, there's more to life than damage control. And so we have to recognize that the form that shows up that seems to require fear is just spinning around. There's, there's no end to the forms that, that seem to require fear. It's just the fear du jour. It's just, just the drama du jour, just the situation du jour. So we want to recognize, first of all, that the coronavirus, there's nothing unique about it. It's just another way that the ego is going booga booga. You should be afraid about this. And of course, in miracles tells us in uh, page one that there's no order of difficulty in miracles. 
And the reason for that is that there's no order of reality among illusions. Let me say that again. There's no order of difficulty in miracles because there's no order of reality among illusions. So whether it's a big scary illusion like coronavirus, or you have a cut on your hand, or your your husband didn't pay attention to you today, or your kid is acting out, or you didn't get your full paycheck, those are all, they all seem to be various degrees or hierarchies of things to be afraid about, but the course is they're all part of the dream. That if you're in a dream, whether you're being chased by one bear or a hundred bears, it doesn't matter because it's all a dream. So we want to not give the coronavirus any more attention than we would anything that would seem to cause fear. And the only answer to fear is faith. And there's a wonderful old poem I love. It goes, fear knocked at the door, faith answered, and no one was there. So what you can do is quit focusing on the scary thing. Begin to withdraw your attention to all the scary talk about the virus. And God knows, well, God doesn't know, people know. God, God's not aware of it, but we are. That there sure is a lot of scary news about it and people talking about disastrous effects and implications. And if you sit there and watch your TV or scan your web browser or engage in gossip or talk about it, you're not, you're not, you're not helping unless you're talking about it in a way that reframes it as an opportunity for healing. So you don't have to watch every newscast. You don't have to discuss every aspect of it. The more attention you give fear, the more power that fear has over you. And one of my favorite Star Trek television episodes was about a time when uh, some malevolent force invaded the Starship Enterprise. And it was taking people over and they were going crazy and hurting each other and fighting. And there was, there was mass chaos and pandemonium on the Enterprise. Now, if that sounds familiar in terms of what's happening at your local Walmart, you may want to pay attention to this, this Star Trek episode. Well, what they discovered was that this, this dark force was actually feeding on fear. And the more the crew got afraid, the, the bigger the, this dark forest got, the fatter it got, and, and the, the, more the, the more the dark forest became powerful, the more people acted on it. So there's a vicious cycle of fear acting on fear, fear acting on fear. So it was growing, growing, growing. Well, finally, the uh, supervisors of the enterprise realized that if they could just get people to quit being afraid, then that would be the end of this problem. So they administered a relaxation serum. So I'm not suggesting to take drugs, but I think it's a metaphor that when they, when the crew got relaxed and quit being afraid, this dark entity had nothing to feed on and it starved it. They starved it. And so the entity had to depart and the enterprise was returned to sanity. So if there's a physical virus, that's one thing. Okay, we'll say that could be a problem. However, the fear factor is a far bigger problem. A number of people have gotten the coronavirus, but a lot, 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 lot more are contributing fear to the, to the situation. And we know that whenever you act on fear, nothing really good happens. That you always have to come back and choose once again and choose love where at some point you chose fear. So we come back to the same lesson that it's uh, uh, quit contributing fear to it. Now I realize that a lot of you as core students, perhaps as spiritual students, may feel uh, pretty relaxed about it or have found your center of faith even amidst the insanity, but you can be a light to other people. And if you simply choose not to agree with them, and support them to relax and have faith and trust, then you're going to be helpful. Let's see what else the Course says about it. Oops. So the Course also says in Lesson 240 that fear is not justified in any form. And once again, the ego would say that this form of fear 
is more justifiable than another, but it's not, it's not. So we don't want to give any undue power to any particular fear because it's all fear. It's just little variations on fear jumping around. If we can't get you from this side, we get you from this side. We can't get you from this side, we get you this side. So, so the really the 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 virus is not so much the enemy as fear is. Now the Holy Spirit would not consider fear really an enemy because the Holy Spirit doesn't give any credence to fear. The Holy Spirit doesn't go into fear but it's really fear we're dealing with even more than the virus. Of course, it also asks us to remember, I am in danger nowhere in the world. That's a really good one, isn't it? I'm in danger nowhere in the world. And so wherever you may go, wherever you are, God walks with you. Of course, it also tells us, if you knew who walks beside you, on the path that you have chosen, fear would be impossible. So is God with us even while this coronavirus seems to be going on? Yes. Is God supporting us? Yes. Is God comforting us? Yes. Is God loving us? Yes. Is God more powerful than coronavirus? Absolutely. Is God more powerful than fear? Absolutely. So I think Emmett Fox said, don't think about the problem, think about God. And so every time we're tempted to go into fear about the virus or anything, ask yourself, what would the voice of love say? And this is a, a, a technique I teach in my coach training, that whenever you're afraid, ask yourself, what does the voice of fear say? And bring it to light. Don't try to hide it. Don't deny it. This is what I'm afraid about. And then the next question is, well, what would the voice of love say in response? Voice of love always says, I'm safe. I'm whole. I live in a benevolent universe. I'm not alone. All is well. So, of course, also wants us to remember Get up here. I'm at home. Fear is the stranger here. I'm at home. Fear is the stranger here. Now, in the ego, ego's world, fear is the home and love is the stranger. Isn't that funny? But we reverse it. Remember, the Course tells us that the the world as we know it is pretty much the inverse of the world of truth. The ego's world is the inside out and upside down of God's world. So are you home or you're far, in a foreign land? Well, if you go into fear, you've, you've wandered into a foreign land. If you go into love, you're home. So we're home. We're already home. We never left home. The idea of separation is a dream. And let's look at one more lesson. I'm under no laws but God. This is one of my favorite lessons, 76. I keep coming back to this. I love this, this lesson. And what this lesson says is that in the world, we've made up all kinds of laws that have nothing to do with God's laws. And it tells us flat out, he says, you, you've made up laws of nutrition, you've made up laws of economics, you've made up laws of social reciprocity, uh, you, you've made all kinds of laws that really have nothing to do with God's laws. And so I often think of this as a difference between rules and laws. People make rules, but God makes laws. And rules can be broken, in fact, they often are. We make rules that you're only supposed to drive a certain speed limit, and yet hardly anybody drives those limits because they drive five, 10, or 20 miles over the limit. So it can't be a law. If you can break it, it's not a law. But they're human rules. But on the other hand, God made all kinds of wonderful laws that cannot be broken. And the law is that you are a child of God. You're creating an image and likeness of God. 
You are whole. You cannot be sick in spirit. You cannot die in spirit that who we truly are, are immortal, eternal, deathless spirits, no matter what the body goes through, no matter what happens on the planet. Ultimately, as the proverb goes, when the chess game is over, the king and the pawn go back in the same box. In other words, we all return to spirit. And even before we return to spirit by leaving the physical, we're already established in spirit. So who we are is divine. And no coronavirus can touch a divine being. Impossible, impossible, impossible. Disease functions at one frequency and well-being functions at another frequency. And the twain shall never meet. And this is why if you're looking for any kind of physical healing, the answer really is to begin to raise your frequency so you're dwelling in a state of consciousness that is not a match to disease. Disease functions at a very dense, gross, heavy wavelength, and healing functions at an entirely different wavelength. So when we drop or rise, we should say, into the laws of God, then the laws of the world can't really touch us especially health laws and nutrition laws. Now, uh, let's put in a parenthetical statement here. Now, because the mind is powerful and you do tend to create your experience, now you can't create reality, unlike lots of New Age and New Thoughts teachings tell us that you create your reality. Well, that's not true. It's half true. You create your experience of reality. But reality has already been created quite nicely, thank you very much. That if reality could be messed with, the universe would be chaos. So God created reality long before you and I showed up on the planet. And reality will be here long after you and I leave. So the laws of the universe are established. They are unbendable. They are unchangeable. God made them up. Nobody gets to mess with them. No evil can touch God, no fear can touch God, no disease can touch God. But we can make up our own experience by thinking what, what, what the Course calls miscreation, by thinking out of harmony with truth. And then we end up living in a chaotic, crazy world where people run for toilet paper at Costco because they think the toilet paper is going to save them from the coronavirus. Well, if you need toilet paper, that's great but it's toilet paper is not your salvation. Of course, tells us my salvation depends on me, it depends on the God within me, it depends on my connection to higher power. That is the source of my salvation. So back to my parenthetical statement. If you believe that you need to wash your hands or wear a mask or not go to work, or avoid crowds or take vitamin D, so then it is helpful to work in harmony with your belief system. Now, of course, we call these methods magic because they assume that there's some external action that can affect your consciousness. But really, it's your consciousness that affects action and results. It's, you know, once again, we live from the inside out. The world does not determine who we are. We determine what the world is by the vision we're choosing to use, fear, well, love. So even though these methods are magic and, you know, you don't need to wash your hands, you don't need to wear a mask, ultimately in the big picture, if you believe, as most people do, that such methods will be helpful, then they're a good idea because they're in harmony with your belief system. So I'm not saying you should wash your hands or not. I, I will probably be washing my hands because I think that's a good health practice. But uh, the biggest picture of all, um, the best health practice is to recognize that you're whole and nothing outside of you can touch you. And so do what you need to do to feel safe. If, if a particular behavior helps you to feel safe, then go right ahead and do it. It's a permission slip saying you give yourself permission to feel safe by doing this particular action. However, in the biggest picture possible, if you can drop into the knowing that I am safe in my defenselessness 
my safety lies, the great lesson, that you are safe before you washed your hands or before you put on your surgical mask, and that really God is in charge. And God will help us take care of coronavirus. God will help us take care of the economy. We will participate in it in the way that we deem the best. But uh, this wonderful cartoon that shows God, uh, so this God kind of sitting on the moon with a megaphone on the director's chair, looking down at the earth, and the, the, the caption said, relax, God is in charge. So let us relax. Let us be like the crew of the enterprise that withdraws our attention from the fear and helps us return our consciousness to love. And the coronavirus will pass. The economy will recover to the extent that it's been damaged, if it has. And most of all, let us use this time on the planet as a powerful learning experience. Of course, says everything is either a pure expression of love or a call for love. All disease is a call for love. And sometimes when times are hard in the outer world, it pulls the best out of us. Someone said that people are like hot water, the real strength, people are like tea bags. When they, when they get into hot water, the real strength comes out. <laughs> So I read a story about how an, a group of Chinese doctors went to Italy to help the Italians with the technology that they had gained from dealing with coronavirus in China. And to me, that's the best of what humanity can do. Humanity can do. When we take a challenging situation and we flip it around, by redefining it as an opportunity to connect, to join, and to heal. So as a spiritual student, or if you're a student of A Course in Miracles, I invite you to, at this moment with me, reframe whatever's happening in your community, on the planet, as a wonderful, powerful, golden opportunity to choose peace instead of fear, and to give love, and connect, and support wherever possible. Let's close with a moment of prayer, if you care to join me. Great Spirit, Holy Spirit, we recognize that you are present, that even while the ego does its gyrations, love is here. So at this moment, we define our status as children of God, as beings of light. We ask for your support to shine, to be a light, to bring love, healing, tranquility, peace, and well-being wherever we go, beginning with our own consciousness. We walk in God, God walks through us, God blesses the world through people. And so I now ask that I, and I hope that I speak for you as well, serve as a channel, as a vehicle for love and blessing, that my presence on the earth at this time may make the world a brighter place. And we ask for a miracle now around this coronavirus, we ask that Somehow, in some way, people quit being afraid, beginning with ourselves, and that what we thought was a really bad situation could turn out to be a huge opportunity for blessing. We ask for well-being, for physical healing, for emotional healing, for financial healing. We call upon the God Almighty that is bigger than any physical symptom or any economy to really guide us to open our hearts and minds and to remember that there is only God. There's only God. There's only God. And because there's only God, there's only love. And so it is. Thank you.